So you're looking to play Connor's Mana Bond build this league, but you're not quite sure how to start it. Well, I have the build for you. So this build is my Hierophant Lightning Conduit build. It is specifically meant to quickly get to red maps, farm red maps easily, get your Void Stones, while also having an easy transition into Connor's Mana Bond build, okay? So as we can just kind of look at the numbers really quickly, 4.2 mil, very nice, 116 EHP pool, not bad. This is a very comfortable build that does a lot of damage that is going to easily get your Void Stones, easily, okay? Um, now, how are we doing that? Well, we're just kind of using Lightning Conduit and abusing this node here. Increases reduction to maximum mana, also apply to Shock Effect. That means we're reliably getting a 50 to 60% shock effect on our on our uh, enemies here. So, um, you know, specking into that hybrid mana thing uh, is really nice, right? It's just going to give us a lot of damage. Uh, and I also want to note that this is 4.2 million on a 5 link. Once we get a 6 link, I mean, we're e doing even more damage. But this is just a 5 link. So I'm not, I'm really no POB warrior in here. I have tested this. This does work really well. Our only sort of like... Uh, pain point is defense and um, making sure that we kind of solve defense as we go. That's becoming a little, that's just your really your only challenge. So if you find that you're dying a little bit more than you'd like, you're not quite block capped. Hold on, I have to move my camera. Uh, you're not quite block capped. So, uh, you know, our defense is relying on mainly just block, right? Block and with the very high EHP pool that we have. So we have uh, 5,000 mana and then 4,500 ES and uh, we're just kind of relying on that and that does really well you know you're not it feels really good um, but if you do find that you're just not quite there yet in terms of your total EHP pool then uh, you can drop the zealotry and just put in grace instead you know and uh, that's not too bad um, you probably do that once you get a six link right get a six link then maybe say hey I'm not doing too hot I every fizz attack just kind of wipes me out we'll just put grace in okay you're not gonna lose that much damage all we care about is farming the gear and the the money required to make the mana bond build and getting our void stones as quickly as possible because if you watch Connor's um, uh, leveling bit video he doesn't really do a good job of explaining how he's doing it and how he's getting damage and how he's staying alive because he he says himself that he's a qu quite a slow leveler well if you want to just kind of be fast and get your shit fast and try to get the jump on the economy like i do you're going to need an actual build that you're going to swap into before mana bond okay um so yeah we're using a lightning conduit an orb of storms with culling strike. We are going to be using chain. Don't worry, you're still going to get big shocks with chain, but just on bosses, you're going to swap it in for culling strike. Uh, we have a zealotry on an eternal blessing, which is very, very nice. The eternal blessing gives us a free zealotry. It's not like divine blessing that you have to press it every time. You just press it and it's a free aura. Our cane cloak linked to um, increased duration. This is going to give us a nice, big, fat, well, depending on your mana, it gives you a nice, big, fat buffer as well as extending the uh, duration of your arcane cloak which also gives damage uh we're cursing with conductivity we have a sigil of power down to give us more lightning damage frost blinking and we also have sm uh, vol smite here this is linked to faster casting but if you find that you can vol smite throw it in it's just extra damage right you're just getting a, a little extra damage if you can do it you drop faster casting just put vol smite in um i don't really it's vol, vol smite very slow so I usually just forget to press it. So I just have it in here just in case. Um, uh, we have in our weapons, uh, weapon two, we're having clarity and tempest shield linked to arrogance, which means we have no life. So no life means low life means we are low life and getting this. Um, now, but this is a little bit later. This is, you're going to be doing this in maps when you have like a good enough e, uh, EHP pool to do that with. Right? You don't want to swap to low life when you have 1,000 ES and you know 3,000 mana or something. Once you have like a comfortable ES and mana pool, then you can go low life and get that get that stuff. Um, but it's relatively easy. Like you'll see with the gear. Uh, and then our movement skill is actually lightning warp. So this is one of the best things about the build. Lightning warp, less duration, swift affliction. You're just gonna be zipping around, pew pew pew, flying through the maps, shocking things as you go. That makes lightning conduit a lot easier. This is the best movement skill in the game. If you can utilize it, you absolutely should. 
uh, especially if you have like a good enough cast cast speed like we have pretty good cast speed so lightning warp is excellent it's it's the best thing about this build is being able to utilize lightning warp our items singularity you don't need a singularity i'm not planning on having a singularity okay um, I have here just like a plus one with crit stats, lightning uh, damage to spells, and uh, crafted cast speed. Um, but, you know, if you get the singularity, it is a little bit of extra damage. Our shield, also, you don't really need the light of Lunaris, but this is an excellent shield for us. Uh, I'm going to be setting up snipes for it. Hopefully, I can get it early. I love this shield. It gives you a lot of block. It gives you a lot of e, uh, ES. It gives you good damage. It's just an excellent shield for this build. So, Light of Lunaris is, you know, hopefully we can get that cheap. If not, you're going to get something like this, plus one, chance to block, critical strike uh, to spells, res, mana. You can go dual scepter if you wanted to. Um, I don't really recommend that because defense is mainly our biggest hurdle. So, you don't need the, you don't need the offense. Um, I have an Aegis here. If you find an Aegis, just put it on, I guess. Helmet, just ES, stats, res. Um, yeah, and um, if you find one with Arcane Cloak, then you can put that on. It's a little bit POB Warrior here with the with the Enchant, but uh, nonetheless. Uh, actually, let's just remove the Enchant. I'm not sure why I have that on there. Is there a way to remove it? Let's just put... Yeah, we'll do that instead. There we go. All right, well, we're down to 4 mil. Um, but yeah, you just want ES, uh, Res, and Stats. That's it. That's all you care about. Same with the Body Armor. Uh, one thing that I do want to note is your block chance. You do want to start, once you start farming the, um, I believe it's an eater. I believe it's eater. Yeah. So start farming eater or buying the, um, the rolls, whatever, whatever they're called, the, the currency for the eater. So you can roll a uh, 7% block. And then you're going to craft 7% block, attack damage or spell damage, whatever you need um, on your gear. But you're just looking for mana, ES. Uh, this is nice because it gives you the 15% more life thing that's on the tree now. Um, same with gloves. Uh, oh, with the gloves. So the gloves, you need Shaper's Touch to swap into Mana Bond. As soon as you get Shaper's Touch, you're going to put that on. But gloves, you don't need the shock spread thing. Um, and you also really don't need the exposure you're already applying exposure and you can do so with wave of conviction. Um, again, this is kind of a, an advanced build. So you, you're looking at this and you're thinking, wow, this looks crazy. It's really not like th these things are very easily replaceable. You just drop faster casting, put wave of conviction, then you have exposure and it's going to be better exposure than the, the exposure on your gloves. Um, but you just want mana, uh, ES stats. That's it, right? Same with the boots, mana, ES stats. The amulet is a very contested spot. So I have here an anvil because I just value the defense a lot more. I mean, the offense is perfectly fine. Four mil is enough to get you very easily all of your void stones. Um, and again, that's a five link, right? Once we have a six link, we're doing even more damage. Um, but with the amulet, what you want to know is uh, I have an anvil here, literally a one fucking alchemy orb amulet. It's very, very nice. This gives you a, a shitload of block attack. Um, and it also kind of just gives you a little bit of armor, I guess. Um, I have it with high voltage here, which is the anoint that you want. You could go foible. Depending on if these are cheap, you could go that. You could go stone of Lazwar, which gives you a chance to block spell damage. So, so again, you want to look at your block and making sure that you're, you're, you're getting exactly what you need. Uh, but this is a great, this is a great amulet too. And this is one, you know, one alchemy, um, I have this link to Divine Judgment for some reason. Hold on, let me change that. But um, there we go. But yeah, the the uh, this the, I mean, like this is you find this in like Act One, right? And this is an excellent neck for us. It just gives us a shitload of block, and we can drop things like we can drop like this whole cluster here, right? And spec that into damage. Um, you know, a anywhere else, like it just, it opens up like, you know, the, the neck area is really where you want to pay attention. Um, I would probably recommend this first until you get something else. Something like this is nice, right? This gives us a lot of damage. It doesn't really do much for our defense. So it's, it's really up to you kind of how you want to do it. I just have the anvil here. I think it's a good mid range between like, you know, good defense and good offense.
Um, but we'll just keep this stone on for now. <clears throat> um, the ring. Okay, this is important. So I have here Velakos and Barracks Respite. I don't know if I would expect to have Barracks Respite early. They are pretty common, luckily. They are pretty common, um, especially with the cards now. So if we can get the Barracks Respite early, it is excellent. It really changes the way the build clears. Uh, with the Barracks Respite, you go from just like blasting packs and having those packs kind of just kill each other to blasting the whole fucking screen. Okay, so if you can get a Barracks Respite, this is one of the things that I'm rushing other than the Curse Gating. Is I'm rushing Barracks Respite, hopefully getting that as soon as possible. There's a lot of Ignite builds that want that though, so it might be contested. You also have Velakos here, which is just more damage for Shock, gives you more Shock, gives you Leech. Um, really, really excellent ring. Outside of that, you just want a ring like this with just Mana, Stats, Res, ES, something like that would be perfectly fine. Uh, this would probably be ideal right here, this situation, if I don't need the Velakos. Really, Velakos is just to cap your shock effect. And then your belt is just crit and stats. Crit and stats. Putting this on, boom, this is what we're looking at. Looks pretty good, right? Not too bad. Again, the whole purpose of this build is to abuse the mana and shock interaction through the mastery. And to also set ourselves up for mana bond, okay? And it's to do it fast, it's to do so quickly, as fast as possible. Get to the end game before everyone. Start farming the gear before everyone. If you're playing Arc and you're leveling just through mana the way that Connor shows you, you're going to have a very bad time. It's not going to be very fun. Those skills do basically no damage already, and you're not adding any damage on top of that. So you're going to be very slow through the act. If you're like me and you just don't want to do that, you just want to blast and start farming, then this is a good option. I'm not going to say it's the best option. Maybe someone out there can find something a little bit better. But um, that is the purpose of this build, is to set us up before everyone into doing the um, the Mana Bond build. And our ascendancies, we're taking Arcane. So we're probably going to go this first, Conviction, Arcane Blessing, Divine, Sanctuary of Thought. This is this node is just so insane. Though both All these nodes are insane. I think Hierophant is so good right now. It's just so good. There's so much power. The Arcane Blessing, Conviction of Power just giving you so much crit chance and so much just like straight off the bat res and fizz damage reduction. And then you get all of the mana stuff that you can scale into. It's just, an, it's just a nutty, nutty build um, or a nutty ascendancy. And and this note, right? This note just like if you were to like reserve mana, crazy, wild. 25% extra mana recovery or mana re reservation efficiency. The other things that I want to note before we go is um, he recommends just like start taking jewel stuff pretty early. And I think you should start taking that once you kind of set your, your, your pathing up. Once you set your pathing up, then you can start taking that stuff. Now you're eventually going to want to go this way. Come down here. You're going to start grabbing this. You're going to grab this excellent little cluster here. You're going to go up here. You're eventually going to do something like this. And then drop all this. Um, that's not until later. Uh, I, you know, I, I wouldn't do this until you have like a split personality or something. But this is once we start getting into the mana bond stuff. That's You're going to go that way. But you can see like it really didn't require that many regrets to kind of fully swap our tree around. We're already going to take all these nodes. You're probably just going to drop this stuff. You know, uh, when we go into Mana Bond, you start putting up clusters. We're probably going to take all the attributes stuff like this. Um, this is probably what the like the build is going to start to look like here. Um, doing some doing stuff like this. Uh, I don't know. Just stuff like this. Okay, I just kind of ruined the whole tree, but you'll see it in his video. He he kind of shows you exactly how he sets his mana bond up um but just keep that in mind as you're building as you're putting things together again this is an advanced build this is not for someone that doesn't know what they're doing it's based upon like certain interactions his mana bond build is like a very very advanced build where you have to manage you know the the way that you're scaling uh the way that you're scaling uh your mana and your mana regen and your spending of mana and your mana leech all of this stuff is converging into this really, really cool build that I want to play that ends up being really strong, really tanky, really uh, powerful. 
does like an immense amount of damage. And best of all, the best thing about the build is that it's like infinitely scalable. Um, he shows videos where he gets up to like a billion DPS and stuff like that. I mean, it's just it's just a really really cool build that uh, I'm excited to play. It's just it seems as if his leveling portion or his league start portion is just a lot to be desired. So hopefully this helps you if you're trying to play this build. All right, peach, peace, peach, fuck.